Kia ora. Kia ora. Paula, what next made a big effort to engage its audience online? Is this the future of live TV? I hope it's something like this and not reality TV or something like The Bachelor where we have a live rose ceremony or some other show where we see people being sent home or taken away crying in a limo. It's something that encourages people to engage imaginatively and intellectually with the issues of the day, I think, is a great thing. The show created a particular narrative around the future. How important is storytelling in the way that we, we come to view the future? It's important to know that whoever is telling the story controls the narrative. So if we're discussing our country, our society, the political spectrum, the future, who is controlling the narrative or who is joining in with the narrative is really essential. But at the same time, the more talk, the more narratives, the more conflicting narratives going on, the better. In many ways, I think in this country, we need more discordant narratives. Mm. We need people stepping up to disagree with each other, backing up what they think, not resorting to abuse or vitriol, but bringing their different points of view because that's when the story becomes really rich and multifaceted. But is that kind of complexity in, in a story, does that turn some people off? You know, are, are we at risk of, of having people switch off if we're, if we're telling something that's, that's complicated and multifaceted? Clearly a lot of people do think that complexity is a bad thing. Um, I'm reminded of this every time I watch International House Hunters, which follows a, a really, really strict narrative form. And after every break, you have a massive recap as to what has already happened, in case you've forgotten during the commercials, or I guess in case you're just tuning in. And I think it's maybe received wisdom that this is how information needs to be delivered to the mm -hmm. populace. Yeah you know, told us, told to us, reinforced, repeated, made as simple as possible. And it's quite possibly that that's how some people prefer to receive information, where everything is black and white, and you're either for or against. Mm. However, we don't really live in a black and white world. We live in a world of great complexity. And while it's true that a lot of people don't want to negotiate with complexity, it doesn't let us off the hook in terms of provoking discussion and trying to change people's minds or just suggest a range of different options because otherwise do we have independent will do we live in a democracy do we live in the kind of society in new zealand that we want i mean one great thing about new zealand i think is that we've been small and nimble as a society we've been able to affect social change when other larger, older, more traditional uh, countries could not. So Maori MPs, women getting the vote, social welfare system. We've been able to really enact social change here. And you don't do that by presenting black and white pictures to the populace. Now, one of the stories that was, was told as part of, part of what next was around the importance of technology and the fact that you know, artificial intelligence and robots are coming that, you know, and they're going to be stealing people's jobs. Um, people are talking about accountants and, and lawyers, you know, those types of jobs <laughs> disappearing. Um, but yet, does, does this mean that, that you know, what's the, what's the role of creativity in, in, say, an arts degree in the future? I think it's funny when it's always accountants and lawyers who have mentioned <laughs> sort of disliked professions yeah, yeah, by we, others. we can do without them, but yeah. Can we do without doctors? Mm, where it's something else beyond a skill set. It's also about intuition and empathy and gut feelings, you know, playing on instinct. Yeah. Or just a wild thought that's, you know, part of the glory of a great doctor and a great you know, medical system and an arts degree which has the death of which has been predicted since I was at high school yep. in the 70s why are you doing that do you want to be a teacher that's the only possible use for it of course I think it's ridiculous to think that any sort of degree training that teaches you to be a critical thinker an excellent writer and to be imaginative, well, to be imaginatively and intellectually curious, as we talked about before. That intellectual and imaginative curiosity is essential to our humanity. When people say, where can an arts degree lead you? I say, it can lead you anywhere you want to go. What's 
crucial that you develop en route through university a critical faculties and an enormous curiosity about how things work and the, the skills to read, to disseminate information, to understand, to articulate. That's what's really important about a university. It's about being better readers, writers, thinkers, dreamers, experimenters, who understand how creativity involves experiment and failure.